Hi, this is Christian Cantrell, and I just wanted to show you a project my team at Adobe has been working on using some, uh, some content that was generously provided to us by National Geographic. Before I start showing you the demo, though, I want to point out that I'm using Chrome Canary here. So if you want to check this out on your own, uh, you'll need to grab Chrome Canary and enable a couple of runtime flags. Uh, so what you'll do is go to uh, Chrome Flags and uh, scroll down here to a couple of features. You'll need to enable experimental WebKit features and enable CSS shaders. So just click on the enable links, relaunch the browser, and you're all set. So back to the demo here, as I start to scroll down, uh, we'll see the article kind of transition in here. The first thing we'll see is this uh, drop cap. And if you look carefully, you'll see that this is an actual drop cap uh, in the sense of the, uh, the text actually following the contour of this O. So this is using CSS exclusions, which is a technology that allows text to wrap either the inside or the outside of a shape. And uh, I think really sort of uh, gives, the, gives the article a nice polished typographical look. Uh, you can imagine how this would look if this text were just sort of vertically aligned. You'd have these, um, these gaps at the top and bottom of the O, which probably wouldn't look quite as slick. Here we have a full screen video. This is sort of a making of feature that National Geographic did, which shows how they uh, were able to get such amazing footage of this tree. Uh, this is definitely something you want to check out on your own. My research team is really interesting stuff. So I'll close that up. Uh, this pull quote here is a good example of something called balanced text. Uh, specifically, we're using a JavaScript polyfill for the balanced text uh, proposal. And uh, what this does is ensures that our pull quote here is always well formatted. So if I expand the width of the browser here, you'll see that the text jumps up onto a single line. Now, as I make the browser uh, narrower, rather than wrapping word by word, which is typically what browsers do by default, you'll see that it actually uh, breaks the line up uh, roughly in half. So we have a nice balanced look. So I think that's... Um, Again, a really nice polished typographical look. Uh, here we have a picture of the giant sequoia, and when I click on it, we can see it at full screen. And as I scroll down, uh, this is probably a good opportunity to start talking about CSS regions. All of the content in this article uh, flows through the article using CSS regions, which means that all of the content is completely separate from the actual layout. Uh, it enables us to do things like these uh, these columns here, but it also enables us to maintain the content entirely um, independent of the article's layout. And so if I start to resize the browser here again, you'll see that the content uh, will actually reflow, which is, which is kind of nice. Um, so, you know, this, this uh, layout is not hard coded, but rather uh, follows the region chain. Now CSS regions are also a really nice way to implement uh, responsive design, since uh, as you hit particular breakpoints as your browser you know, expands or narrows, you can change the width or height of your regions or the position of your regions, and you can be sure that your content will just continue to flow through. As I scroll down, you'll see this image uh, uses a filter to uh, transition from monochrome to color, which is kind of a cool effect. I'll show it to you again. So as I scroll down, it's monochrome and then it uh, transitions to color. We're using uh, CSS exclusions here so that uh, the text is able to make a little bit better and more interesting use of the, uh, the space here at the base of the tree. Now, as I scroll down here, we see uh, that this is a full image of this tree. And before I show you this demo, uh, I probably need to provide a little bit of background on this tree. This is a tree called the President. Um, it's a sequoia. It's believed to be the second tallest tree in the world, but the most massive tree in the world in terms of the amount of wood uh, that it actually contains. Um, and by the way, the tree is 3,200 years old, so it's been growing for a very long time. So this is a, a massive, massive tree, and we wanted to convey the, uh, the height and the size of it. So uh, we have this, this thumbnail here, which is an image that National Geographic took. And when I click on this, uh, on this link here, then what we'll see is sort of a 3D uh, animation here where the image is built from all of these tiles. While it's being built, it's scrolling down the tree, down towards its base, and we're getting a sense of how incredibly tall it is. And at the bottom, we see this uh, 
this sort of tiny figure standing at the base. Now I can start to scroll around and I can see other, um, other scientists in the tree and get a feel for how big this tree is in relation to the, uh, to the people climbing it. I can also scroll from side to side as well. So that's kind of a cool effect. That's uh, using WebGL and specifically a library called 3JS. As I scroll down a little bit further, this image transitions in. Uh, we're also using CSS exclusions here so that the text follows this line of trees as they uh, go off into the distance here into the background, which is kind of neat. And I'll scroll all the way to the bottom here. And the first thing I'll show you here is that we're using CSS exclusions again uh, so that this text will follow the contour of the state of California. This is really slick. This is the kind of thing that without uh, exclusions, you would have to do, um, you know, essentially as one big image, which means that you wouldn't get things like uh, indexing, uh, you wouldn't be able to select it, you wouldn't get find and page, uh, the text wouldn't integrate with your content management system and all of those things. So this is really nice that, uh, that you can just do this purely with text. We have a couple of SVG infographics here, which I'll open up and they have some cool transitions. And the last thing I wanna show you here is a uh, custom filter a CSS custom filter. When I click on this, the bottom of the page kind of peels back and exposes this infographic. I can kind of click around and explore this tree and then click here to, uh, to restore the page. Um, now, actually, one more thing I want to show you is um, in case you forgot anything that I, that I just showed you, you can click on this link here at the bottom, uh, which says show editor marks. And you can see that we have this nice annotated view where you can scroll through and see how everything was done. So I think this is a really great example of the kinds of online experiences we're going to increasingly see and that uh, readers are going to increasingly demand and that Adobe's contributions to the web platform are going to increasingly enable. Uh, I wanna thank National Geographic for providing us with this amazing content. And if you wanna learn more, just check out the URL in the video's description. Thanks for watching.